always try to find a corner so that I can navigate and kind of know where I am because everything's in reverse when you're looking at it. And then I'm just kind of zooming in and out because there's actually multiple layers to a fecal sample. All right, we're here at work, and I got I have this little sample, and this is this is what we need uh, to do our test. Really, this is probably twice as much sample as we need in this little jar, and so. Uh, uh, sometimes people bring us an entire, you know, Cool Whip tub packed full and that's just too much. But, uh, you know, I guess there's no such thing as too much because we can get rid of the rest. But we need a fresh sample. It's got a little moisture still in it because the parasite eggs um, are alive in there. And we're, well, that's what we're going to be testing for. So I'm going to take this to the lab. And uh, down here, here's Emma. We'll give it to her. And she's oh, going to take you. this to the lab. And All here's right. what we can do in-house. It takes us about 10 to 15 minutes. And this is kind of how we process the sample. So what we have is a little Whoop. centrifuge tube. Mm -hmm. And what you, there's like a two-part tube. It's really interesting thing with a little gasket in the middle. And it's, uh, it has a filter in it to try and uh, remove some of those solids. Because what we're testing for is the eggs of the parasites that are actually microscopic. You can't see them. They're tiny little eggs, and um, so this, what are you filling it with there? It's zinc sulfate. It's a solution that um, we spin it down with that um, I believe it's more dense than, mm -hmm. than the, the eggs we're looking for, so the yeah. eggs will float to the top, and that's how we, mm -hmm. we, we find them. So, and uh, so I'm actually it will, it will um, they, the eggs will float to the top because they're less dense than the than the solution. Mm -hmm. And this uh, method that we use is even more effective than that. So she's really got a sample and she mixes it up thoroughly because if those eggs are trapped inside that organic material and all those fiber and so forth, we want them to be released. So we make it into a liquid sample and they're, uh, so that they're free to float to the top. And then what she's gonna do is lock that filter in place and it, it takes some of the big debris out so that we'll have a nice clean sample when it's finished spinning. So she's going to take this, <clears throat> put it in the centrifuge, and it's going to spin for six minutes. For six minutes at 1300 RPM. Mm -hmm. So listen to this thing. This is a high tech machine. It's got a little sound to it, but our old centrifuge would just knock your socks off. It used to be so loud. So we'll take a pause here for a few minutes, six minutes, and then she's got this microscope here where we can uh, read the sample when we're finished. Okay, it's finished spinning. So it looks pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of the, you can see some of the solids have gone down to the bottom. So centrifugal force has forced those things to the bottom and centripetal force has forced the worm eggs to the top. If that's correct, give me a big thumbs up. If that's wrong, comment below, please. All right, so she's twisting that thing and it causes the fluid to come to the top. Then a little meniscus of fluid on top and then she puts this cover slip. It's just a tiny, thin glass slide. And it sits there on top of that thing for three more minutes. And as the eggs come to the top, they will stick to that glass and in just a minute or three, Emma will pick the glass up and there will be a little bubble of fluid with the worm eggs in it. And she can put that on a slide and read it under the microscope. Here now. So now I'm taking the slide and hopefully if there's any parasites, the eggs are stuck to that slide there. So I lift it gently and then at a 45 degree angle so that there's no bubbles, hopefully place it on this slide here. And then Put it under the microscope and I always try to find a corner so that I can navigate and kind of know where I am because everything's in reverse when you're looking at it and then I'm just kind of zooming in and out because there's actually multiple layers to a fecal sample because um, some of the eggs from the different parasites and some of the protozoal parasites have different densities so they float to the, either the top layer or they sink down to the bottom layer of the, of the fecal sample. So I kind of have to zoom in and out every yeah. time I see something. So I can't even see that 
micro staples that stage moving, but you are, mm -hmm. you're zooming up and down mm -hmm. uh, through several layers. And it's on such a small level that we can't even see it from out here. Mm -hmm. So and then if I'm you focus on something, we'll try to look down the microscope and see if we can um, see something. This is a big piece of plant material. You can tell that it's a, well, if you've ever had a biology class, you can tell it's a plant because of the way this it's structured and the cell wall that you can see pretty clearly. So this is there. an art and a science, and this is part of the science part, for sure. So that's the plant material. It's like a shard of, like the skin off a, a piece, a blade of grass. And you can see those little segmentations are individual plant cells. And so the animal cells look different. Mm -hmm. So that every you know dogs eat some plants and they in their dog food has some plants and uh, so that's where we see it if we look at this chart up here we can see there's like there's a round worm egg and this is what she's looking for some of these distinct little eggs and that's what they'll look like under the microscope it's hard to see yeah. mm, that's much better